So our next topic is L'Hopital's Rule. Now, um, I'm recording this under the heading of Techniques of Integration because that's the chapter that it appears in the Apex Calculus textbook. However, L'Hopital's Rule on its own really doesn't have anything to do with integration. It's a method for evaluating limits. Um, and, and perhaps L'Hopital's Rule should rightly be considered as something that appears under applications of differentiation. And you'll, you'll see why quite soon. Okay. And in fact, many of you using, using this book might be taking a course where, in fact, that is um, where this topic is, is arranged, is, is something that appears as an application of the derivative. Some of you might have actually seen L'Hopital's rule already just in limits, right? Because it's, it's a method for evaluating limits. So in, in a way, this goes all the way back to the very first chapter of the textbook. But as we're going to see, it, it's a method for evaluating limits that involves derivatives. So it, it's maybe sort of backwards or circular to try and put this in the section on limits before you've done derivatives. And, and especially because, well, Where it applies is it's going to apply to limits of the form, you know, limit as say x approaches a of f of x over over g of x, where f of a is zero and g of a is 0, right? So in other words, it's a, it's a so-called 0 over 0 limit. Um, and we saw many of these in chapter 1. And, and of course, the derivative itself is defined as a 0 over 0 limit. And back in chapter 1, we said, well, the reason why we're making you study all these 0 over 0 limits is because that's how the derivative is defined. And so you need to be able to evaluate these limits if you want to have any hope of understanding derivatives. And so the, I guess the interesting thing is it sort of comes around full circle. Once you've defined the derivative, you can actually use derivatives to evaluate limits of this form. Okay, um, so how does it work? What does L'Hopital's rule say? Well, L'Hopital's rule says the following. It says, if the limit as x approaches a of f prime of x over g prime of x exists, then, um, and I guess we should say, where f of a and g of a are both 0, then the limit as x approaches a of f of x over g of x will be equal to the limit as x approaches a of f prime of x over g prime of x. Okay. This is one version of, of L'Hopital's rule. Now, turns out that um, you know, you can kind of, I mean, if you sort of take the reciprocal of this thing, you can, you can always turn a 0 over 0 limit with manipulation. A 0 over 0 limit could also be thought of as a infinity over infinity limit. So it's also going to work if the limit as x approaches a of f of x is plus or minus infinity and the limit as x approaches a of g of x is plus or minus infinity, okay? So zero over zero limit, or, or if you like infinity over infinity limits, that's when you can use this method of L'Hopital's rule, right? Um, a lot of people, if, they, if you took calculus in high school, you may have seen L'Hopital's rule kind of very early on, and then 
you probably get to university calculus and you're really annoyed that you didn't get to use it right off the hop when we're evaluating limits, right? But there, there are reasons for that, one being that you need to understand derivatives properly before you can use them to go back and, and look at L'Hopital's rule and evaluate limits. Now, um, to understand why L'Hopital's rule is true, um, the proof requires sort of a refinement of the mean value theorem called Cauchy's mean value theorem. We're not going to state Cauchy's mean value theorem. We're not going to prove L'Hopital's rule. Um, we won't do any of those things. We're just going to show you how to use it. Okay? Um, but maybe, maybe one way to kind of think about it is, is if you think in terms of, of linear approximations, right? If you're thinking of linear approximations, well, then, you know, if we're, if we're interested in what's going on near x is equal to a, right, we might say, well, hey, look, when x is close to a, right, f of x is approximately f of a plus f prime of a times x minus a, and g of x is approximately g of a plus g prime of a times x minus a, right? And so we're in this scenario where if we assume that f of a is equal to 0 and g of a is equal to 0, well, when we're looking at f of x over g of x, right, then it seems as though we have this, this rough approximation. So that's gone, right? So we just have f prime of a times x minus a g prime of a times x minus a. And, well, oh, look, you know, you can cancel, right? And so that makes sense. And, and uh, you know, the point, of course, is we assume that we, we want to get to a point where we can do this limit by direct substitution. So we expect that we should get down to, to this being simply f prime of a over g prime of a. Now, there are a number of flaws in this argument, right? One is that, you know, this, these two approximations are, are unrelated, right? The, um, the size of, say, delta f for a given delta x could be very different for f and for g, right? And so just because we have a linear approximation for f and a linear approximation for g, it doesn't mean that we still have a good approximation when we pass to the ratio, right? Because if, if those two approximations are different, right, if, um, if sort of the, the size of the delta x needs to be significantly smaller for one of the two, then, okay, so then maybe, maybe this is not a good approximation anymore, and, and this is not valid, right? So this mean value theorem approach, of course, takes care of those details and puts us on solid footing, and yes, indeed, we can prove this, and it, and it works, okay? Um, main words of caution using L'Hopital's rule. You have to make sure it applies, right? If you're not in the situation where you have a zero over zero limit or infinity over infinity limit, then L'Hopital's rule doesn't even apply, and so you shouldn't try to use it. If you apply it in a situation where, where L'Hopital's rule is invalid, you're going to get the wrong answer, right? Um, and, and there are a lot of people who will end up feeling especially silly because they had a limit initially that they could have just done by direct substitution because g of a was, in fact, not equal to zero. You could have just plugged in the value. Um, and then you apply L'Hopital's rule, and you get the wrong answer, right? Because it didn't, it didn't work in that situation. Uh, another thing to keep in mind is that sometimes, sometimes the first derivative of, for f and g, it might also be equal to zero, right, at a. Um, so you might have to go to the second derivative, or maybe the third. Um, and it's possible to apply L'Hopital's rule multiple times as long as you get to a point where at the end you have, a you, know, you have a limit that exists. If that last limit in the chain exists, well, say, say you had to go to like the seventh derivative. Since the limit existed for the seventh derivative, applying L'Hopital to go one step back gets you the sixth, and then the fifth, and then the fourth, and then the third, and then the second, and then the first, and then the original functions, right? You can walk your way back. Um, but, you know, if you keep applying L'Hopital's rule and you get down to a point where the, you, know, you never reach a point where that final limit exists, then again, you can't actually use L'Hopital's rule. Um, so there are a number of things to be 
careful of. It is a big hammer, um, but don't apply it blindly or you can get yourself into trouble.